make sure to subscribe to Globetrotting if you haven't already. When it comes to replacing an aircraft such as the Boeing 747, you know it won't be an easy task. You certainly can't replace what the 747 has done for airlines worldwide in the last, say, half a century. However, you can definitely provide a more efficient alternative that'll give customers that extra edge in a market nowadays that demands so much when it comes to efficiency. Only two next generation aircraft can provide customers with high levels of efficiency and also not falter in their capacity, the A350-1000 and the 7779. So let me delve into the latter and its role in replacing the 747. Just what can it do? So firstly, the 747's decline is worth examining. It hasn't been a shock by any stretch, but certainly to an extent, rapid. Airlines have sometimes scrambled to retire the 747 fleet, favouring these twin-engine jets, or favouring, as silly as it may sound, just generalised efficiency and a means to cut costs wherever possible. This especially felt during the pandemic. Operating a four-engined aircraft like the 747 is significantly more expensive compared to your newer models, with not just fuel prices continuing to fluctuate, but a high focus now on airlines with regards to your environmental regulations, maintaining and flying 747s have become a lot less attractive as was entered the 2020s. When considering aircraft nowadays are capable of operating similar missions to the 747, if not identical with half as many engines, well it can be a no-brainer. The rapid decline of flying passenger 747s really was spurred on by the pandemic which decimated the Queen of the Skies fleet. As international travel demand plummeted in 2020 and onwards, airlines faced many challenges, and I don't need to get into those, but we did see widespread fleet reductions. The grounding of older, less efficient aircraft like the 747 became an absolute priority, and it was a decision that as enthusiasts, I know we look down on and hate. But we did see British Airways, KLM, Qantas as some of the leading airlines that fast-tracked their 747 retirements during the pandemic, slashing years off the experience expected expiration date. The drastic drop in passenger numbers made it unfeasible to keep these larger planes in operation. As the industry focused on that more feasible aircraft that I've been speaking of, especially as your operating environment became more difficult, airlines leaned towards whatever would make the job easier on them. And no shock here, but twin-engined aircraft emerged as the much-preferred choice. Unfortunately, the rise of these twin-engined aircraft meant that airlines were in investing in them instead of others, truly the circle of life and the circle of the aviation industry. Moreover, this actually meant that some of your less efficient types, such as the 747, were phased out. With so much talk on the rise of twin-engined aircraft, that could stretch from the A330neo to the 737 MAX, but it is where I'd like to take a look at the 777X. This is a plane that has been solely designed to take the next step in the long-haul market, not just replace the existing 777 series, but act as a competitor to the A350, potentially for some an answer to existing quad jet planes that need to be retired, and more. The 7779 specifically is the largest member in the series, and the more favoured variant at this stage. It is a theme seen across many aircraft programs. It'll bring capacity and efficiency with it. For many companies once introduced, it should fill the void that the 747 left, and I'll get into some perfect examples a little bit later on. But let's look at those certification issues that have really plagued the 777X program, causing disruptions to airlines fleet planning, and yes, to a certain extent, involving the 747's retirement. These delays I speak of have forced one of the optimal examples of Lufthansa to very much reconsider their strategy. Lufthansa had planned to replace some of its aging quad engine jets with the 777X in 2021, which is when they intended on taking first delivery of this aircraft. But the delays have mounted, and now it's found itself in a bit of a holding pattern, no pun intended. The delays in the 777X's arrival combined with setbacks in other aircraft programs 
have meant that Lufthansa has had to extend the operational life of the 747 and other jets temporarily. A decision, while fantastic for us enthusiasts, is not optimal for the airline, with executives being very clear, stating that losses are coming every day because of these decisions. So, while not publicly said, you can make the safe assumption that the arrival of the 777X as a pretty hefty capacity boost, even larger than that of 787s and A350s, will play a role in easing the implications felt when the 747s do depart. Moving ever so slightly over to the West and the United Kingdom with British Airways, this is another customer of the 777X that flew the 747. British Airways, however, unlike Lufthansa, long identified the 777X as the natural successor to its 747 fleet. But one thing we saw was the global pandemic force BA into making a pretty definitive move, which was retiring its 747 fleet earlier than expected. While the Queen was always destined to leave, she left, like I said, a couple of years earlier than what had been initially penciled in. And while this resulted in a temporary reduction in capacity, it aligned with demand being so low. BA believed their future laid with the 777X, among other more modern wide bodies. And despite the ongoing going delays to the 777X program, British Airways and its parent company, International Airlines Group, have managed to navigate the transition with, you'd argue, minimal public frustration in comparison to some of your other leading companies. They have relied on other wide-body aircraft from the 787 to the A350 to maintain those long-haul operations in the meantime. And remember, British Airways is one of the few airlines to be a firm believer in the A380 and has continuously supported the program. A comparison now on the specifications of the 777X and the 747 is pretty important to understand just what the differences are. The 7478 is the latest and final variant of the 747 family, at least we can make that case now. It has a range of just over 7,700 nautical miles. This can vary, of course, and it will typically seat over 400 passengers in a three-class configuration. Its four-engine design means that, yes, it can have a pretty hefty payload, and this means for high capacity routes it can be favoured but again an airline has to make such a large aircraft work at a pretty hefty cost. Whereas when taking a look at the 777X it can also carry over 400 passengers and has a little less range but it is still pretty fantastic with over 7,000 nautical miles. Remember the 7478 does come with equipped upgrades over the 747-400 with the program leaning on technology featured on the 787. Meanwhile, the 777X, well, it represents another jump in efficiency. It's powered by the GE9X. It's got folding wingtips and other specifications that are really allowing the 777X to grow into its own. That is always going to be the case. Unfortunately, now the 7478 is two decades plus old when taking a look at all the studies involved. The 777X being slightly newer means that it is able to adopt new gen technology. Just if we saw an aircraft in, say, 2030 release. Overall, the two aircraft types, well, the most notable fact is the efficiency boosts, and that is very visible through the two engines on the 777X, offering great value for money. So, can the 777X replace the 747? Well, in some ways, yes, as seen with British Airways and some other customers, they view the 777X as, yes, not just a means to grow their long-haul fleet, but boost capacity and replace what aircraft like the 747, A380 maybe at times, and the A340 have done. It is very important to also consider that aircraft manufacturers are no longer pursuing quad-engined aircraft. This basically means that the 777-9 and as I've touched on the A350-1000 are the best airlines are going to get if they demand high capacity on certain routes. So these planes will be the answer. You can let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Thank you very much for your support here on the channel. Take care, do be safe, and I'll see you in a couple of days for your latest industry analysis.